Hi everyone, I am today trying to do a podcast instead of any other video. It's been going well on the testing of the recording and how it works, but whenever like I go live and I'm going to do it, it gets kind of weird, I don't know. But my plan is to not do any cuts, if you don't know, I do streaming where everything is live, so no cuts there. Um, in terms of how long this podcast would be, it's my first, kind of second, but in this style, the first I'm doing, so I haven't really planned it out. Um, I'm going to talk about something that happened three years ago. Um, I'm recording this on the 23rd, and if you wait six days... It happened exactly three years ago. So since this is a podcast, I won't care about what's going on in the video. It's just me talking at the same time as speaking. So if you got stuff to do or like you know, do something else while listening to this one, I would not I would not recommend it's kind of I feel for me it would be a waste of time just watching my face because I, I won't care. <laughs> so do something productive, do some laundry, do some cooking. That's what I normally do when I listen to a podcast. I nearly said watch podcast, but I don't. So let's get into what I want to talk about today. Um, I am now 20 years old. Three years ago, I was 17. I just turned 17. And I had made a really good friend online that had already visited me in Norway the year before. And I decided that I want to visit her in Japan the year after. So this is a story uh, about me getting to Japan. And I could say traveling to Japan, but you know, a lot of things happened. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So... Um, I have a couple of notes because there's so much that happened on this trip that it's no way I could remember everything just like on the fly right here. So I will be looking at notes. So I'm looking down at my paper and it's 2014. Um, I've never been on a like, I've never been traveling alone at this point. My mom is like, you sure you can do this? Like, you just turned 17, you're way too young to fly, like, half across the world. Is that how you say it? So, if you don't know, I live in Bergen. It's in Norway, Europe. And I, um, my plan was to go to Osaka. And don't worry, I ended up in Osaka in the end. <laughs> so my mom drove me to the airport and, um, she left me up there, up there, and she said, uh, don't die, <laughs> please get there safe, and um, I think you can do this. My plan originally was to just um, take the plane to Amsterdam, and then a plane from Amsterdam to Osaka. Pretty, pretty simple, it should be. Um, I first... There wasn't like very very minor minor issue in Ber at the Bergen airport, which was that I didn't get the the seat. I I, di I didn't get any seat, but they were going to give it to me when I got on the plane. No problem because there had been some rearranging of passengers and such. But I got on the first plane. No problem. Um, the reason why it was like some mess ups is because there had been a storm the day before so some of the passengers on the plane that was supposed to leave the day before didn't get on it so they were booked in a my plane and the reason I'm saying this it made kind of it, 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 got, it got I got into bigger troubles because of the storm later on um one second <laughs> So I also want to say, yeah, my, my friend was waiting for me in Japan. Um, I told her my my route. I was going to arrive at Osaka Airport at 
at this time and she was going to pick me up there. Um, I got on the first plane to Amsterdam. I sat beside two businessmen. There was the uh, at the time I was traveling out, I don't know, there was just a lot of business people on these planes. Um, and I didn't really care to talk to anyone, I don't see why I should. I was just like f fidgeting around with my Rubik's Cube. I like, I brought my 5x5 five five Rubik's Cube and I tried to remember how to solve it because I, I didn't and now I definitely don't. I haven't picked it up in a while. Um, and um, they thought it was really cool for some reason, like, oh, it's a Rubik's Cube, can you solve it? It's like, eh, no, not really, I'm, I'm not that good. Uh, one of them was from Germany, was from Germany, and I didn't know until a little bit later that the other one was from Bergen. And the second I, oh, we realized that both of us were from Bergen, because he didn't know either, or Norway in general. Um, we started speaking Norwegian, it's like, oh, you're from here, and just like, it, he was a lot older than me, but we started talking. It was nice, nothing problem, nothing creepy, anything at all. And yeah, uh, it was a short flight and nothing, nothing much. Just went on the plane and got off. <laughs> and when I got off, we I've been talking a lot to this this one man um, from from Norway, and he asked like, okay, there's a little while until my next flight and. It was a little while until your next flight you want to grab lunch and here I'm like okay he didn't seem creepy at all not in any way um but am I supposed to say yes to have lunch with a guy strange stranger that is probably the age of my dad I know he had two kids at the same age as me um but I was like yeah sure why not like, what, what can happen? Nothing wrong. Uh, and we went for lunch. We talked for a little bit. Like, we had, we had stuff to talk about. I have no idea what we talk about, what we talked about. But we, it, it wasn't, wasn't creepy. It wasn't uncomfortable. The most uncomfortable thing was that I didn't like any of the food I found at the airport. So I was like, like I, I, I don't know. I, I felt I paid too much for the food. That's the only thing I thought about. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, uh, yeah. So I have lunch with with this man, and it's his time to leave. He has a flight to catch, and I'm like, okay, nice to meet you. Um, have a safe flight. He said the same back, and goodbye. I never saw him again. Nothing else in there. It was it was really nice. So it started off really nice. Um, I didn't have any bad feelings about anything. I thought everything was going to go smoothly and we're all good to go for the next flight. I get over, finally find the gate. Amsterdam airport is kind of a lot bigger than Bergen airport where I'm used to be like flying from. So I finally find my way to the gate and uh, I am told to wait uh, together with a lot of other tourists or tourists, uh, a lot of other passengers, I wouldn't say most of them are tourists, there's a lot of Japanese people on the like, and, and also Europeans, it's just a normal flight, and I thought, okay, I'll wait, you should normally do what the staff is telling you, like, don't riot or anything, so I wait, I sit down, just like, I'm on my phone, just like, okay, I have enough battery for a little while, I, I should be fine, and, um, I also had an iPod for my music, so I had double amount of battery since I knew it was going to be a long flight to Japan. And um, people start to board. I see the plane outside the windows, with like big windows uh, that you can see out on the airport. And people are boarding, boarding, and boarding. And they don't tell me to go. They said these people are, people are going first, and then they ask some other people, "What's your ticket?" And, yeah, okay, it's this. You can go. And I sit there. And after a while, like, but I should board this plane. It's it's my plane, right? So I go over to the staff and like, but here's my my ticket. I'm going on this flight. Right? It's like, no, you stay. We ha you just sit there, and I'll get you. Just just wait. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll sit down. No problem. And I sit there for a while. 
I see they close the doors, and then I see the plane leaves. And I was like, but that's my plane. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, why is the plane leaving without me? Why was I not allowed on the plane? I told them and it was awful and there were, I was not the only one left outside the plane. There was a lot of people there. Or at least like 10, 15 of us that I remember. I know it was more around, but we were the one that were, ones that were told to follow this one man to another side, like part of the airport. I was told that because of the storm that's been the day before, they had had more problems and had overbooked some of the planes, which meant that I didn't get on my plane. Someone else got my seat. Um, and I, I didn't know what to do right here. I did not contact my parents yet. I was just like, okay, follow this man. He knows what to do. I didn't, I didn't panic at all, or like, it wasn't really any reason to panic, just like, follow instructions still. They all frig figure it out, it wasn't, I wasn't the cause of the problem, so yeah. So, we went across the airport to some other part of, of, of the building, and up some weird stairs, and just like, in a real like, small place, it's not, you, I don't think there was any gates there, it was just like, a little waiting area, and that was it. And when we came, there was a lot of other uh, people as well. Some were really, really mad. I knew there was some that was going to Mexico, as I heard. And they were yelling at the staff, just like, I was supposed to be there then. Why didn't I go? And why am I stuck here? And what are you going to do about it? And yep. um, some people were really stressed. And little me was just sitting there in a chair and waiting for information and instructions on what to do. I did not know <laughs> what I was up for <laughs> next. So this whole story, I don't mean to put up as clickbait because it's it's just a good story. It's nothing like big that's going to happen. It's just a lot. I felt it was a lot to handle for a 17 year old not being used to travel. So if you think that something really bad, bad, bad is going to happen and that's what you're waiting for, I'm, I'm, don't get your hope. Get your hopes up. It's, it's just a lot is going to happen. So uh, I find a little charger on the side and it's like, okay, I better get some power now. I don't know how, uh, how long I'm going to be without any charge on my phone and such. So I plug it in and I sit on the side just like sending a message to my dad like, um, hi, um, I am still in Amsterdam. I saw my plane leave and I don't know what to do. The staff is fixing it. It's not my fault and it's gonna be okay. But I, I don't, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. It, it's gonna be fine, Dad. Don't worry. We're all gonna be good. <laughs> so... I got, after this, I got a message back from him, just like, okay, you sure you're going to be fine? It's like, yeah, dad, I'll be fine. And while I text him, I um, see the staff coming back and I listen and he says, or I, I walk over and he speak to uh, us going to Japan and says like, okay, so we have a couple of flights. We're going to try to book you into different ones, but there's like one or two seats on the different planes. So you're not all going to go to the same one. And so you had to know who was in groups and who was alone. I said I was alone and I, I kept waiting. He kept, he comes back um picks up a few of the different uh, passengers and or people and tell them to go here, go here. And I, I stayed there for a while. It was probably, I don't know if it was long. It didn't feel like very long. But at the same time, I didn't know where to go. So it felt really long. <laughs> And he tells me, okay, you're going to Hong Kong. Here's what you have to do. I was like, okay, never been to China. I guess that's real cool that I can go to China. Not that I was going to be anywhere else at the airport. And then I didn't get any more information. I just said like, okay, you're going to Hong Kong. And then he comes back. He's like, no, you can't go to Hong Kong. Sorry, it's too late. I'm like, but okay, I'll stay. It's fine. I, I can't go to Hong Kong. Uh, 
I wait for a while longer, get some charge on my phone, and I the same man comes back and says, "Okay, you're you're going to Shanghai instead." Okay, sorry, I'm still going to China. Nice. I message my dad saying, um, "No, I I was gonna message my dad, but I think I never got to that <laughs> because uh, the man says you're going to Shanghai." But your plane leaves in 10 minutes and you have to go through security again. And I was like, wait, what? I don't know where to go. Where am I going? And he sent me and at least one, maybe two other guys, like, on the same plane. And out of just, like, to, to not die <laughs> on the way, I asked one of the guys uh, that was older than me, like, hey, you're probably more used to traveling than me. Can you please help me out a little bit since um, I don't know what to do? And he he was totally cool about that. And and he said, okay, let's go. We're going this way. I have, We both got our schedule where the different planes were and the gates and the seats and everything. So we run because we realize it's on the other other part of uh, it's in another part of the airport it was probably not on the other side but we had to run for a little bit and on this whole trip i have like a big backpack because i had my dslr camera for filming which i realized was out of battery so i couldn't do any filming on the way um i had my laptop and i had books and i had everything to keep me entertained for the whole trip and I ran with this on my back and just like with my little legs behind it, just like, wait for me, wait for me, I'm coming, I'm coming. And we find our way to the, uh, the gate we're going to and the secur security control was right outside the gate. Um, again, I was supposed to send a message to my dad saying, no dad. I'm not going to Hong Kong because I sent him a message about, yeah, okay, I can go to Hong Kong. Um, and he thinks I'm going to Hong Kong still. But I'm on my way to Shanghai. So most of this journey is probably a lot more stressful for my parents sitting home just like, okay, our little daughter is somewhere out there. We don't know if she's safe. And my mom was definitely freaking out. I, I just know her. She was so stressed. <laughs> So I'm not able to contact my parents until I actually get to Osaka. I think I didn't message them until I got to my friend's house, which was around 24 hours later. So for around 24 hours, I was lost for, or in the perspective of my mom and dad. Don't worry, I was fine the whole way. Nothing, nothing bad happened, just a little, little bit stressful. That's all. So, we get to the plane, and I've been all calm the whole way. A little bit confused on where to go, but I've been calm. So, not stressed, just like, okay, they're gonna fix this. Okay, a little bit sweaty on the way to, the, like, the gate. I get that, but not stressed. Just like, okay, we hope we're gonna make this, you know. And I get on the plane, uh, I sit down, and beside two business, oh, businessman and businesswoman, um, and I'm like, okay, I'm here, I'm going to Shanghai, which is at least closer to Japan than Amsterdam, and I put my bag um, above my head, and I make sure that I have my phone, which I didn't have. Somewhere on the way, I know I had it, up where um, I got the message where I was going. I knew I had it there. Um, re like trying to rethink like it's gone, it's gone, where it's gonna be. Uh, I realized, okay, I had it at the security control. So I lost it somewhere between the security control and my seat, which is only like, it was five minutes between there. Normally I always check my, for, my, for my phone. So it's not like I'm gonna go a long time without it. And this is the first time I really start to stress. Nothing has changed except that I don't know where my phone is. 
uh, of course, there's a lot of problems if I don't have my phone because all the numbers to where I'm, like the address to where I'm staying, the numbers to the people I can contact in Japan is on that phone. So, of course, I am stressing out. First time on the whole trip, I, I, I start to cry. I was so stressed out. I just like, I cried. I was like, look all the way around. I was like, where is it? Where is it? I, I, I have no idea. And I asked the, um, the staff, like, I've lost my phone. I don't know where it is. We can't leave. I need my phone. And I'm allowed out of the plane again. I go back to the security control. I still can't find it. I'm stressing out. I'm like, oh, it's not here. It's not here. And sh the woman says, like, we have to go back. The plane is going to leave. And okay. I was like, okay, the phone isn't here. It's probably on the plane, I hope, because I thought I recall, uh, or I, I thought I remember seeing it uh, in the security control. So I didn't lose it before, uh, lose it before that. Uh, I get back in my seat and I've checked my bag. I've checked all, like, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. And the guy beside me kindly asks, can I call your phone? Because, he, of course, I told him when he saw me stressing out, like, oh, where's my phone? Where's my phone? And I was like, yeah, sure, call it. But I'm pretty sure it's either off or, or in silent, silent mode. Um, was mostly sure it wasn't silent, but it was neither. It had sound. And it was on under my seat, nearly, uh, like, behind to the next passenger behind me so I've somehow been able to drop it on the floor and maybe like pushed it behind or something so I find my phone <laughs> and I'm just like 100% calming it's like okay no worry I have my phone we're all good we can go and I tell the staff like yeah no problem I found it I just stopped it it's fine <laughs> So we're all get to go again. Just a little bit, like a small break breakdown. It's it's, it's totally fine. Don't worry. <laughs> mm. I'm just looking through my notes so I don't forget anything. Oh, we're actually done with one page. My bad. Yeah. I said right here. We're good to go. And what awaits me, it's an 11 hour plane. Uh, plane ride? Did you say that? <laughs> I have to sit on a plane for tw uh, 11 hours. No problem. We're all good. Uh, plane was really nice. It had really good food. I was like, plain food? Is there any good plain food? Can I get more of this? This is great, please. Yes. Um, negative things <laughs> about the plane is that I was between two people. These two people knew each other. But they got one on, I got one on one side and one on the other side. Uh, the guy was mostly watching movies throughout, throughout the whole trip, which he seemed to enjoy. The woman, on the other hand, was sleeping through the whole trip. I was like, can I please be you? I love sleeping through things when it takes forever. But because I was between two people, I tried to like rest my head on either side and I felt just like falling over to both of the people. I was like, uh, okay, not comfortable at all. So for that 11 hour trip, I got 30 minutes, maybe, um, 30 minutes of sleep. Yeah, that's what I got. So I kind of envying the girl on my right, but, or woman, I'm sorry. Um, but it's fine. I got through it. They had like this fancy TV where you could like, if you knew anyone else on the plane, you could like talk to them there. I didn't know, like the, the, the guy that helped me down here that I decided to trust through the, through the whole trip. He was somewhere on the plane, but he didn't sit next to me and I didn't speak to him. Like I just needed him to get me to Japan safe. So... <laughs> Everything was great. I watched Let It No What well, Let It Go. That's the song. I watched Frozen in Japanese. That was um, it's pretty cool, and um, it was a really really long trip, but I finally got to Shanghai and I went off and was like, okay, we're done with the worst part. Now we just have to get from Shanghai to Osaka. 
we got this, no problem. So, um, we get off the plane and we check our schedule or we have checked our schedule before we get off and we realize we have one hour to get out of, uh, from, from when we land to, like, to get to the next plane. We have one hour. Uh, what I didn't know until later, like minutes later, is that we are now checked out. It's not transfer anymore. We have to go up to the main like entrance part of the airport, which is an airport I've never been to since I've never been in China or Shanghai at all. Uh, we had to get up there um, and check in again, because if you don't check in, the plane leaves without us. So, I'm kind of lost. Everything is new. Uh, first, I get off the plane and just like follow the main crowd. I found this this guy again that was going to the same place as me, and he had the same route. Um, and I just like, please get me there, please. I need help. <laughs> and he was like, eh, I don't know where to go, but we'll figure it out. Or I don't know if you knew where to go, but we just ran. And uh, we run. Like, I'm pretty sure I ran so much. I don't even know how far it was, but he seemed really far, especially with my tiny legs and my big backpack. Just like running after this dude, like, wait for me, wait for me again. Just a much longer run than the one in the Amsterdam airport. And we see. Yeah, uh, I think we first checked if our luggage was on transfer or if that one was on uh, or if we had to pick it up and then check it in again. Luckily, it wasn't transferred, but we wasted a lot of time because we first we looked for our luggage, then it wasn't there, and then we asked the staff who had to stand in line. So basically, we could have trusted that it wasn't transferred, but I'm glad we checked just in case. But we wasted a lot of time. So this hour is not an hour anymore. We have <laughs> less time than that now. We get up and check in again. Uh, we had some problems with the machine. It didn't want to recognize the, th the information we had to get our tickets and such. But we asked the lady um, that was around the area and, and sh she helped us out. We finally get our tickets. We are checked in, which means the plane can't leave without us. But we're still really far away and we only have like half an hour or something. Remember this is three years ago, the exact information is really hard to remember. So how much time we really had? I can't remember, but we didn't have much. So I realized that Shanghai airport is a pretty big airport as well, with a lot of people and a lot of lines. So I'm pretty sure we only stood in Two, three, two or three lines from we checked in in Shanghai to we got to the plane, but it was really, really long lines. It took forever. So we get through the, um, if, if you're not watching the video right now, this is me thinking, just, you know, if you want to check my security security this word we got through security and I think either no that was the next one so we get through security and we run to the next line where we have to write on these little papers it's like what are you carrying do you carry anything scary um also on the plane when we before we landed in Shanghai we have to uh, we got little papers on the plane where it said like, what's, why are you in, or why are you traveling to China? I just put transfer and do you carry anything like with you or for these different things? It's like drugs, too much money or whatever. And but we have to fill that out again in the next line. And we went through that line and got through finally. I didn't even see where we had to pick up these papers, but this other guy that was following, he just got, he, he had everything under control. I, I don't know if he was stressed or he was like used to this, but thank God I had him because I would have messed up so many places. I would not have found the way at all at any time 
from Amsterdam and in Shanghai um, and I will now find the papers and I would might not have been able to check in even because you know I'm not good at these things I didn't read <laughs> the papers we got properly I was just like I, okay if you know me you know I hate reading normally so you would think that this is true because it is I didn't read the papers I'm like I'm trusting this guy. I'm not gonna read it. He figures it out. I'll just gonna follow, follow him through the whole thing. <laughs> and I did and it worked. Next time I should be a little bit more uh, on my own and not depend on other people. So next time I'll, I'll read it for myself. <laughs> so we get through the whole paperwork station or whatever. Well, the lines go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, and we get through finally. And we are on the other side and we have to run to the gate and uh we have very very little time at this point we're like okay the plane shouldn't leave without us but i was so sure that when we got there every everyone was going to be gone and we were going to be the last one on the plane when we get there running super sweaty just like <sighs> okay we're here um everyone's there no one has boarded the plane at all everyone's just just waiting sitting on their phones or whatever and I'm like but we're late why is everyone else here uh, what I realized is that the air condition on the plane to Osaka was broken so we didn't have to run the whole way because the plane wouldn't have left until later anyways and we would have gotten on the plane we could we, we didn't know that so no problem we we ran the whole way and, and got a little workout that's, that's that's cool you know um they eventually let us on the plane even though they knew that they were not going to be in the air for a while because they have to make sure that everything is in order like nothing can be off because you know safety and everything i appreciate so much so this was in July nearly August 29th of July to be exact and if you didn't know China's pretty warm you know and we get on these buses and it was like so warm out so I was like okay that's no problem we'll get inside but as I mentioned on the plane it was still the same temperature as outside I felt remember this was also three years ago um but the air condition was broken so we sat on the plane for maybe half an hour or something uh, we got water they they handed out water luckily i'm so happy um but it was so warm <laughs> oh my god now we just sat there and wait, waited um no problem waiting for a long time i said i felt i've done the whole trip like even the 11 hour plane we were just waiting to get there right so sitting down just trying to relax and still not telling my mom and dad that hi i'm in shanghai my dad's sitting home in norway looking at his plane app like when things land and leave and i've told him the old times for the plane in um uh or in amsterdam the the one for hong kong so he sits at home just like checking his plane. He's like, oh, she's supposed to land right now in Hong Kong. He's like, yeah. um, I'm not there. I'm in Shanghai. But I, I'm on the plane and ready to leave when the plane is ready for Osaka. So I was good. I was good. No problem. And we leave for Osaka, finally. And I was like, this is a shorter trip, especially compared to the 11 hour trip that I had first. Uh, it's probably soon closer to me being awake for over 24 hours, except that 30 minute sleep I got on the plane. And I didn't feel tired, mostly because I was so hyped that I was going to Japan and stressed because I didn't know I, like if it was anything else that was gonna go wrong. I felt like I've been through enough. When I tell this story now, I feel it doesn't sound like that much, but I think the reason it felt so much for me, <laughs> it's all the running. 
When I say we ran to a place, it takes me a couple of seconds to say. When I actually ran to that place, it took like 15 minutes, I felt, I have no idea. It felt so long, and I'm out of shape, and I was out of shape, and, you know. <laughs> That's why this story. <laughs> oh, it's probably why I remember still, because I had to do a lot of running. What do I know? <laughs> so, we're all, we're in Osaka. We're in the city at, at the airport that I was going to be at. I haven't told my friend yet, I think. I don't know if I told her the second I got there when I got Wi-Fi or if she got the message someone else, somewhere else. But I'm pretty sure whenever I got Wi-Fi, I immediately texted her, Hi, I'm late. Trouble with stuff. Here you go. I'm here. Pick me up, please. I don't know what else to do. And... I'm like so hyped and so stressed and like walk off the plane. I am luckily with this Mr. Random dude that helped me through the whole trip from uh, from Amsterdam. And I'm like on my way out to like find my luggage just like out there to like towards freedom or something with the rest of the crowd. And then I see him stop behind me and I was like, wait, but you know, where are we going to go together? I need you. I don't know if we're done yet. <laughs> And he says, this is the name of my, my name is on this sign. And it was like a woman holding up this sign. And I was like, oh, shit, we have to wait for you. <laughs> and then I woke up, I was like, hey, my name is on that sign. I should have seen that when I walked off the plane, but I didn't read anything out. I, I don't know. So I walk back and I talk to the lady and she says, your luggage is not here yet. We might get it in a couple of days. Like, we know where it is. It's not lost, but it's not here. And I was like, I'm going to stay here for two weeks. And everything I have to wear until I get my luggage is are these sweaty, sweaty clothes that I've been wearing for over 24 hours. And I've been sweating while I'm running, you know. What should I do? <laughs> and... We follow the lady down to another, like, more empty area since she said she was standing right outside the plane. So there was a lot of human traffic. Not, not the bad kind. Uh, <laughs> so we follow her downstairs or to an empty area and she brings up this, this map. Folder? Map is, is the thing with... Okay. One second here. The map is a thing where it shows all the countries and such. That's not what I'm talking about. Is it a file? Is that what you call it in English? This is like English lesson with Alice. Binder? Is that maybe what you call it? So she brings up this one paper first with lots of different pictures of uh, different like types of uh, luggage things. And I point to which one that looks like mine, and I tell her information about how it looks, like, uh, personal details to it. I had, like, my my letters at the top, and she tells me which color and everything, and I, I, I fill out this. And he does the same, far away from me, um, with another guy. And I give her my address of where I'm going to stay. She also asks me why I'm here. And I just say, you know, I'm, I'm here to meet my friend. I'm going to stay for two weeks. It's tourist stuff, you know. So everything on that site was, was fine. And after a long while, everything is sorted out. I've given her everything. She calls my friend and asks, Hi, I have a girl here that, that can't be alone. Are you around to pick her up? And my friend answered, like, yeah, I'm right outside, and we're going to take her home, don't worry. <laughs> we're going to babysit her, you don't need to do it anymore. <laughs> and before I go out, I go back to this Mr. Random. I just want to mention now that I made a video about this guy, or not about this guy, but it is a video for him, because I really want to say thank you to this guy. And the last time I saw him was when, after I've given all the information about the luggage, I walk over to him 
and just like sure thank you and I hope you're gonna be okay and have fun in Japan and such in my head I'm like constantly like you should ask about his line you should ask about his line if you don't know what line is it's basically just like Facebook Messenger just another messenger app that most people in Asia, or at least Japan, I know, uses. So I expected him to have it. And um, I never asked about it because I was too scared. I thought it was weird to just like ask someone about this. Just like, hey, can I get that, you know? So I never asked. Which I really regret now. Because I, I never felt I thanked him properly. I don't know what my last words were to him. I don't know how thankful I was there and then. Because everything has just been going on. I'm like in the middle of this and I, I don't know. I didn't process everything until later. Um, so I have this video telling you shortly about this story. And how much he did for me. I don't know. I don't feel I mentioned enough. How fucked I would be without him. But he he saved me. Basically. Um, so I put this video up there for sharing. So if maybe it reaches enough people. One of those people will be him. And he will get my my thank you. So if you haven't seen the video. Or, or anything. It, I'll put it in the description. And if you could share it or show it to your friends or make them show it to someone else, thank you. Thank you so much. That would really help me. I it's it's not for me, it's just for or it is is for me to properly thank him because I don't think he actually got like a proper thank you for everything he did for me. So I think it's been over twenty four hours at this point. I'm super tired. I get there in the evening. It's already night or like dark out there. I find my friend. We're like super happy. Just like, hey, I haven't seen her in like over a year. Woo! So happy. And uh, by the way, I haven't seen her in three years now. So I kind of miss her. <laughs> and the woman that was following me outside, she's like, okay, here's your friend. You're all good to go. And they spoke a little bit in Japanese. And I was like, what? What are you saying? You're talking shit about me? And um, we left for the train. And then we took the train home. Um, and I probably went to bed. I, I, I can't remember. I, I, I probably got a lot of sleep, you know. I had a little bit of a jet lag. And a little bit of no sleep for the last 24 hours nearly. So it was a pretty long trip. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you find this story interesting at all or if I presented it in any good way. It's basically just just me sitting here in a room alone talking, talking to myself or, or you know, saying saying words out loud, you know, uh, but it's it's a story that. For myself, I, th I, th I think it's interesting. Not that it was like, oh, the plane nearly crashed, or, you know, I was stuck there, or, like, someone robbed me, or, or anything, you know. Nothing, it it's not a made-up story. This is just, you know, a story I like to tell people, you know. And it's 100% real. Of course, some of the minor details might be off, since... I never wrote anything down. It's just something I remember and it happened three years ago. So it was still fun sharing it though. So if you liked it, I would love you to tell me what you thought. Or if you hated it, you know, tell me as well. It means I won't do it again. That's that's also nice. And if this was a success, I might do more podcasts because I know I really like podcasts, like listening to them, trying to be productive. And if other people like listening to my voice, we can always try to find something else to talk about. You know, I love talking and I'll definitely continue doing that if it's on a podcast or a stream or just to myself. We'll we'll see about that. So if I missed out any any part of the story. I'm sorry, and if I ramble on for too long, 
I'm sorry about that too. But this was my, my, my little story. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. And I see you guys soon. Bye.